You know, we know of Buffalo as the city of good neighbors, but in a lot of ways, it's also a city of refuge. And refugees have come from across the world to the city of Buffalo to start a new life. And on Community, we are celebrating our refugee community. Welcome to Community, I'm Pete Gallivan. And I'm Claudine Ewing. We are here on Grant Street on the city's west side. It's really where it's like an intersection for ethnicities, and that's why we're celebrating our refugee community. Yeah, and this is nothing new. Buffalo has acted as a landing pad for people seeking a better life for centuries. The year was 1918. 15 million people immigrated to the United States, many of them to western New York. The YWCA saw a need and the International Institute was born. We were started as a program to help what Americans called war brides. The women who married servicemen overseas and then came home with them when the war was over. To come together, to find other people who had similar history and were going through a similar experience. But that was just the start of the century of helping people from all over the world become assimilated to American culture and life in Buffalo. It's that balancing act, right? I want to be American and I want to be successful, but I don't want to lose who I am. And the Queen City has a long history of being a landing pad for people searching for a better life. Whether we're talking about the Irish during the potato famine in the 1850s, the Germans in search of opportunity and religious freedom in the 1860s, Italians leaving a country in political strife in search of prosperity in America in the 1880s, and a decade or so later, a mass Polish immigration for a variety of reasons. International Institute Executive Director Eva Hassett says her family is like so many others. Her ancestors came from Ireland in search of work. And that was always one of the proud stories in my family was that they went from working on it, from building it, to being a lawyer for it. And that is the American story. That's so many of our stories. And it was those stories that wove the tapestry that we know as Buffalo one that is celebrated in this permanent exhibit at the Buffalo History Museum. Again and again and again and again, we hear that story. People who came with nothing and made enormous contributions for their families, but also for our community. Here in Buffalo, freed slaves, African-Americans, Native Americans, the Irish, the Germans, the Poles, Puerto Ricans, and so many others built the canals, the railroads, the factories, made steel at Bethlehem and neighborhoods in Buffalo. But each group had to fight for their own piece of the American pie. They were treated very poorly, um, very poorly, violently in some cases, by the people who were here. They were called criminals. They were called diseased. Um, sound familiar? And the fact that they fought and stayed is why the Queen City grew. Looking at this bar graph, you can see the city's massive population growth and boom days were in direct correlation with the periods of mass immigration. We're seeing that in small pockets today. The settlement of refugees from Africa and parts of Southeast Asia is turning around neighborhoods. One of the best examples of that is Grant Street and Buffalo's West Side, an area that saw years of decline and a growing problem of vacant buildings and empty storefronts. The people couldn't figure out what to do, right? All of a sudden what happened is some refugees from Burma opened a store um, to sell Asian groceries to their community and it worked. And continues to work, building what many have called the new Buffalo. And Hassett believes that as much as this movement is turning around neighborhoods, we should be looking at immigration and refugee resettlement as a path to our future. If you're not including immigrants in your strategy, if you're not thinking about how are we attracting immigrants, you're missing yeah. the whole thing. With increased population comes more services from the federal and state governments a workforce that employers can count on, and a resource that will attract new businesses. The diverse refugee population also gives native Buffalonians a view at a much larger world. The schools are much more diverse, and that's a good thing. So people's children are having the opportunity to know someone from Iraq, or know someone from Burma, or know someone from the Congo, um, and be able to, to understand not just the culture, but the world. It adds a little more flavor into a community that's always been a melting pot. Buffalo celebrates it all. Buffalo celebrates Italian heritage, Irish heritage, um, you know, African American heritage, Burmese heritage. Like we celebrate it all, and that's just so incredible. Yeah. We're so lucky.
I really want my parents, so my goal for my parents is, being, is seeing me being successful in life and also helping my families that actually, that live in, that are actually still in Africa and helping the family that, because I have a really big family. For so many refugees, coming to Buffalo means giving their children a bright future. Next on Community, see how some local Buffalo schools are helping children of refugees find success in America. You remember the song? I believe the children are our future. Teach them well and let them. No, I'm not going to inflict that kind of pain on you, but the children are the future. Yes. And for so many refugee families here in Western New York, they're not only the future, they're the reason they came here to give the kids a new future. Exactly, there's an African proverb that we've all heard. It takes a village to raise a child. And certainly for many of the refugees coming into Western New York, the Buffalo Public School District, that is their village. And so we had a chance to speak with parents and teachers and educators about it. Ali Alamato. Uh, she's like very proud of us. This is a group of students and parents representing countries from around the world. Refugees in Buffalo, New York, learning at Lafayette International Prep, formerly Grover, and International School 45. It gave me a chance to get my education rather than, like, rather than being in my country, like being scared of being killed or maybe kidnapped while going to school. People who grew up here have no idea of what you've gone through. The education is free and uh, you don't, it's safe. You're not going to worry about like a bomb coming into in front of you every time you go to school. Bashar, 19, and his sister Sarah, 17, are from Syria and now they're Buffalo scholars. Now I'm the president of National Honor Society in my school. They challenge the the traditional Buffalo students, mm -hmm. there's a lot of um, competition. There's their challenge. Our National Honor Society is almost 100% students from other countries. International School 45 sees refugees when they're very young. The doors are open, our students are here. Traditionally, at the end of the year, most students don't go to class. Our school, we have our students there, and we have 1,173 students. What about that term, refugee? Do you like that? Um, I don't like it because um, I'm doing like uh, what everybody's doing and I, I'm not different. I'm still a human like everybody. What was the most difficult part about coming here? Mostly English. It challenged me a lot. Meeting other people like in, in like the American school. So because I started, because I came here in eighth grade. So meeting them and also being like shy, talking and how they may laugh at me the way I may speak. Sakuye has conquered that. She's getting awards, and she's a Lafayette cheerleader. Clemity was born in Congo. Her pictures show she hasn't forgotten her culture while embracing life in the U.S. I want to be a case worker. When we came here, the person that received us, he didn't treat us well. We was drinking, we was drinking the water from the bathroom, and that's the most memory that I have, and I don't want other people to go through that. Refugee students present a unique and rewarding challenge for educators. You know, in our district, we have uh, nearly 7,000 multilingual learners. They're in every single one of our buildings. In our schools where we translate what a bathroom is, what a classroom is, what numbers are, um, friends, and we as teachers try to understand their language too. I think our school has like 30 something languages. Um, and it's nice because there is no other option. Um, but to use the students to speak to each other to learn English. The language barrier is huge, so you have to have patience. Sometimes we're waiting for an interpreter, we're using Google Translate. Educators have to consider traditions and how they discipline. Being aware that in some countries when there's an adult reprimanding a student, in some cultures looking down is the respectful thing to do. So not to have that knee-jerk reaction of look at me when I'm talking to you, just understanding you know, having that conversation in a, in a culturally sensitive way, um, and then learning some greetings in the different languages. Um, to be able to say assalamu alaikum to a Muslim parent goes a long way for them to feel welcome. What's clear is that many refugees are making the best of their education. 
I think you got it like a 98 it on the global 99. exam. Uh, 99, <laughs> I'm sorry. I knew it was high. See, I but I mean, on, on, I mean, as an English language learner, on a global exam that some kids struggle to pass and don't graduate over. I feel that I have responsibility to um, help uh, the United States and also refugees because I want to be a doctor and also a peacekeeper. Despite the distance, Buffalo's refugees cannot and will not forget home. I just uh, to remember, uh, I don't want to forget about the Kasha back home. Just ahead on Community, a woman from South Sudan shares how she's keeping her culture alive here in Western New York. You know, moving to a new country presents a whole array of challenges. Learning a new language, new lifestyle, new culture. Yeah. But the refugee population here in Western New York has found a way of learning all of that, but also preserving their culture. Exactly. That's why I spoke with a woman from the South Sudan who works inside of the West Side Bazaar. She's found a way to use this to remember home, but she's also an entrepreneur. Gizma Quinney has been here since 2002. Like others, learning English was tough, and so was reading it. But she went to school and got a job. And look at her now. She has Gizma's African style inside the West Side Bazaar. Why Buffalo? Uh, we don't choose. Immigration just choose you to bring you here. We don't choose. And um, the first year I was, um, maybe I can stay here a little bit for <laughs> For, uh, I come in August, it was summertime, and a couple months later it was snow time. So I like, okay, I have to move to Arizona. <laughs> but I, every year I like, I'm moving, but I'll be, I end here for 16 years. I like Buffalo. She started her business on the west side in 2011. I don't forget my language and, and show the American friend also, the culture from South Sudanese. Is it hard being a refugee? Yes, it had to be refugees. When you come uh, in a different country, you don't know the language, you don't know the system. Um, you come like, when I come, I was single. Now she's learned what it takes to be a businesswoman, and she's successful. If I was not here, I'm not going to learn about the business. Yeah. I'm not going to get a chance to help the others. So why is it important for you to bring items from your country here? Because even though you're, you're a refugee, you want to still have a piece of home. You don't forget who you are, right? Yeah. I just uh, to remember, uh, I don't want to forget about the culture back home. And also, I need to show my father, we don't have a lot of fancy stuff. Here, you will find items that are unique, items made out of paper from South Sudan. There's jewelry, even musical instruments. Now, this is a representative of the South Sudan, right? Yes. Talk to me about the items behind you because we often see clothes, but what do they represent? How did that show me Sudan? Um, what they represent like this kind of material. You can see that kind of material. It's hard to find it here, but I um, I go home twice a year or one time a year, but they call them Kitengi. Does it make you proud to be able to have things from the South Sudan here? Yes. I'm a person, I'm growing up in a war. And today I come a different person to show my item, uh, to show my country the product they have, to show um, the way I grew up uh, back home and the way I grew up and the way I, I stay here for 16 years. And it made me proud a lot. Inside the West Side Bazaar, you will see an array of cultures with goods from various lands. said about refugees and the music. We're talking about the drum, the history of it, why it is so important to them. That's coming up next on Community. One of the things we hear from the refugee community is that they never want to forget where they came from. And that they have been able to keep their culture alive even after they moved here to Buffalo. For the African culture, the music is important, especially the drum. In Africa, the drum is the heartbeat, the soul of the communities. It doesn't matter what region, what tribe. It's universally a traditional uh, 
American Dance and Drum Performance Company was formed because the founder believed to know the traditional West African rhythm and movement could revitalize Buffalo's East Side. Eric from Ghana in West Africa says the drum is meaningful. Amazing. It heals you, it sends a message. It heals me, makes me happy, right? As soon as I hear that, that, that rhythm, I'm, I'm going for it. I can be dancing, I can be drumming because I'm a dancer. So as soon as I hear the rhythm, oh man, boy, you don't have to tell me, go there, just shake your body. In Western civilization, it's usually more for entertainment. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, people coming from abroad, from home, from Africa, when they hear the drums here, I'm pretty sure, like, he said it makes them happy. And even African Americans, when we hear the drums, it makes us happy. There's a way you do it, isn't there? It's a style. It's not just a boom, 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 boom. What is it? The heartbeat of our ensemble is the Jun Jun family, Doom Doom family, OK? And those three drums are played together always. The biggest one is Doom Doom Ba. Doom Doom Ba. Yes, Ba meaning big. And then you have Sang Ba, which is the next size. And the baby is Kinkany. And that's a family that's always together. Ashe? Ashe. In Africa. We have a lot of uh, ceremonies that we do. So like something like naming ceremony, wedding, uh, funerals. This is a djembe drum. Eric talks about making one. It takes like five days, because you have to let it sit. First you soak the skin, and then you put it on. You have to like tight, tight it, tune it for it to be good, and then you put it on the sun to dry. When you go on the west side of Buffalo and you see so many people that look like you, that dress like you, how does that make you feel, knowing that you have music that can bring them all together? I think it's an amazing thing. That's a universal instrument, you know. It's the ancient instrument, one, the oldest instrument, you know. And all cultures use it. Native Americans, Chinese, it doesn't matter. But the, it's strong. It's a very, very strong when it's the African drum because they started off with a talking drum, which with the talking drum, because of the way it's made and how you uh, work the strings around the side, you can change the tonality as if someone is actually talking. It has been truly a pleasure sharing these stories of our refugee and immigrant community with you here on Community, not to mention the history of how immigrants built the Queen City. 
Exactly. That's why on Community, we enjoy celebrating communities, and in this case, the refugee community. If there's something you would like to see featured on our show, feel free to reach out to Peter myself via social media. Or on WGRZ.com. Until next time, take care.